Well, hello and good morning. So this morning, I've come up to a location near Airds Bay. And what I'm looking for is, normally when I drive this area, I pass an old wreck. But it's not a big wreck, it's just a kind of old boat that's just been sunk. But it's next to the beach area. So what I'm doing is I'm just walking round the edge of the bay just to try and find the wreck. Because it's easy to spot from the roadside. But notice you have to park quite a bit away from it and then work your way back. So I'm just following the edge of the beach. So join me this morning and let's see where this journey takes us. Right, I finally reached the edge and there's the wreck. <laughs> it kind of does look a wee bit, um, it does look a wee bit more sinister when you're driving past and you don't have a lot of time to, to look. However, it is a wreck. I'm here. I'm in a most beautiful area in Scotland. I'm about 20 odd miles from Oban. It's beautiful here this morning. I left the house at about quarter to six and it was kind of drizzly rain. I've driven through quite a lot of har and mist um, as I've been coming here through the mountains. And now I'm on the west coast. I've got this beautiful sun and it's warming up quite nicely. So the sun's quite harsh. Not that I'm complaining, but the sun's quite harsh. So if I go to the left hand side, that means the boat's going to be silhouetted because I'd be facing into the sun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working my way around from behind the camera and work my way around and I'll use, there's a lot of seaweed in front of the boat. So I'm going to try different compositions while I'm here. I'll go low, I'll go medium, I'll go high. And uh, yeah, whilst it's not a massive wreck, it's, uh, it's a wreck all the same. So let's get cracking. All right, so my first composition is I'm going to kind of slowly work my way around. I'm going to use this kind of high end of the shoreline to get high level photographs of the wreck because I'm conscious that I'm trying to get separation from the land and also from the, the North Shore and the trees and the mountains and then the sky. So for this composition, I've got the boat in the top right hand third. I've set my ISO, because it's really, really bright, I've put a polarizer on. And <laughs> I suppose that the real challenge for me here is, that's struggling to see the back of the screen because it's so bright. But I've got F11, ISO 100, and I'm shooting at a 30th of a second. So what I'll do is I'll get some long exposures. I'll try that later on just to see if that works because the tide's slowly coming in and we've got another hour before we reach full tide. So I'm also conscious, even though it's really quiet, and it's slow coming in, I'm just conscious of where I'm positioning things just so that I'm aware that the tide is coming in. So I'll take that shot and let's see. Now what I'm going to start to do is, I'll, from a compositional point of view, even although I'm in this location, I'm going to pull back and take a wider shot and then I'll zoom in and I'll take a close-up shot and then I'll start to move around.
All right, so for this shot, what I'm doing is focusing in on got a whole bunch of nice kind of yellow ochre and greeny seaweed. And it's really contrasty, so I'm using my polarizer filter because I'm trying to cut the glare and the water in the foreground here so that we can see through. So I'm still at f11, I'm still at 30 for a second, and ISO 100, I've focused in on the boat, which is on my top right hand side. I'll take that shot, and let me just double check. I just need to make sure the boat's sharp. And I can also see through the water. Yes, we can do that. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lower the camera even more and then see if we can get a really low level composition here. Right, so I'm going to take a wide angle shot first. Right, so I'm going to set my f-stop up to f-16 because hopefully I don't need to do a focus stack here. What I can do is focus in on the boat I'll take my shot. Again, it's great having the sun. What I'll do is, I'm going to zoom in to the boat. I'll take a couple of shots of the boat. I'll then move around and I'll, de I'll get different viewpoints of the boat and I'll bring you with me. I'm then going to look at how I can get some shots of the seaweed because some of the seaweed really nice. I might change my lens and I'll put the 70 to 200 on. And then what I'll do is I'll zoom in on the boat and that'll blow up the background and make it really closer. There's quite a lot of kind of shellfish debris in between these rocks like crab legs. There's some nice coloured, red coloured seaweeds. And the contrast on the black rock um, is quite nice. So what I'll do is I'll keep working this area and we'll see how many different images we're going to get because I'm conscious that yeah it's a boat yeah we can play about with different compositions but from a variety point of view we really want to look for other things and we'll work the scene there's a big boulder over there on the left hand side that would be quite cool for maybe a loch shot as foreground interest because I can imagine if I took a shot for the boulder onto the boat because the sun's directly in front of me That'll be a silhouette, but we'll try it. We'll try all these things, that's why we're here. Um, right, so I'm going to go lower. I'm going to take those shots and I'll share those images with you now. So I've had to um, come back over in front of the boat because the tide has got 15 minutes until it reaches high tide. And actually, I, do you know what's funny? I never noticed because it's so quiet and so peaceful. But my bag was just at the edge of the water there. So I've come and I've moved my bag up onto the grass because I think the water line kind of goes to the base of that black boulder over there. So. Um, another useful fact if you're interested about Loch Etiv is Loch Etiv is about 31 and a half kilometres long. It is a sea loch and at its widest point it's about 1.6 kilometres wide. But it's also quite a deep loch so it's 150 metres deep at its deepest point. So it is a significant lo loch. It's really famous, well it was made really famous because on the northern side down by Glen Etiv, that's where they filmed James Bond, Skyfall. And that's the iconic photograph that everybody has with the two with James Bond and M standing in front of the, the Aston Martin. So everyone goes up there to that viewpoint now and takes their, their own pictures. Me too. So if I can find that image, I'll share that image that me and Carlan did for ourselves with you now. And uh, Right, so let me get cracking on because I'm conscious the tide's coming in. Although, to be fair, from where I'm standing, the tide's not going to come in that high, so it's not really going to uh, disrupt the photo in any way. So what I'm going to do is a kind of close-up shot 
of the boat in the water, I'm taking out all reference to the, the land. So I've zoomed straight in. I've got the boat in the top right hand side. And then what I'll do is I'll take that shot. I'll then zoom out a bit and I'll get a wider shot that includes a kind of ha half of the land and the mountains on the other side. And if I zoom right back, I'll get a full landscape shot. But what I'll also do is I'll move higher up because the reason I've been shooting on the, le the right hand side of my screen is because the boat is actually tilted and pointing up the way. So the boat's given me a natural leading line up to the sky. But what I've also noticed, depending on the sun and depending on what filters I could use, if I stand up high, I can then get the boat in the bottom left hand side of my view and then have the landscape in the background. And that could also prove to be quite a nice image. I'm slowly working my way around because I'm hoping the sun moves enough that if I can get to that big boulder, that would be a brilliant foreground interest shot with the boat in the background. That'll depend on the boat, to be fair. So let me crack on. I'll take some more shots here while I'm focusing in on the boat and then I'll think of other areas. So I'll take these shots, we'll keep moving forward and uh, I'll share the images as I go. Right, so I'm going to try and get a panoramic shot, but I'm getting, while I'm polarising for the water, I'm getting highlights in the clouds. So I'm just going to put this 0.6 ND grad filter in my hopper. Fiddly, but we've got there. And I'll just pull that down. And what effectively that's doing is Whilst I've exposed for, well, I've used the polarizer for the foreground, I'm just adjusting it right there. So whilst I've used the polarizer for the foreground, the clouds in my image were overexposed and I was getting the highlight clippings and they were flashing. So now I'm using an ND grad, I'll take that shot and I'm just checking, no highlight clippings, and that's actually a really nice <laughs> image. So, what I'll do is I'll keep the ND grad on, because I said earlier I was going to take some wider shots. So why don't we try that now? Like I said earlier, I've come back on the bank just further up and I'll tell you, it's amazing. Another five minutes and that tide's going to be full height. So I've increased my f-stop to f-14. I've adjusted my ND filter for the sky. I've got no clippings in the clouds. I've adjusted my polarizer so that we can see through the water. And I've got boat, the boat in the middle. I'll take that shot. My exposure, meter, my exposure meter is saying I'm dead on. So I'm just going to zoom in just to make sure. I see that's really nice. So now there's quite a breeze coming in and the water's got quite a lot of movement. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take a couple of more shots. I'm going to take the shot that I mentioned earlier where I'm keeping the sun out but I've got a lens flare. So I'll put the boat in the centre of the image. I'll take that shot. And then what I'll do is I'll share these three or four images with you now where I've had the wider angle view of the boats. I'm going to move over here now to the left hand side closer to that big boulder just to see if there's any different compositions for that side.
so far. A wee bit of variety. What I've done is I've put my longer lens on the 70 to 200. I've put the ND grad and the polarizer on the end of it, and I've zoomed straight into the wreck. And then what I'm conscious of, I want to get the water that's focused through the windows into the back. And that could be, could be quite a nice shot. And uh, I'll show you all those images that I take with this lens now. Alright, so I've taken a whole bunch of different shots with the 70 to 200. So now it's big stopper time. So, what I'm going to try and do here, so I've got my, <laughs> I've got quite a collection. So, I've still got my polarizer in, I've got my ND grad just in case I need it. And I'll expose that, I'll come back 15 seconds. So I'll make that 30 seconds, and if that's the case, let's see how this works. And again, I'll zip back to the 30 second mark so you can see what it is. Alright, so 30 seconds, I'm still getting a lot of highlight ex exposure uh, clippings, but I am getting the water all smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my 0.6 ND filter and I'm going to get the strongest one that I've got. I'll add that in and then let's see how that works. Alright, so I've got my 1.2 ND. I'll add that in here. And uh, let's see what difference that makes when I add, again, 30 seconds. So... I'll start, I'll start the camera and then I'll report back in 30 seconds. Alright, so that's my 30 seconds up and from what I can see, oh wow, <laughs> that's actually turned out brilliant. So I've got F8, bulb mode, ISO 11, ISO 100 and I know I'm shooting into the sun but hopefully Hopefully, it looks good in the back of the camera. I hope it looks equally as good in the computer. So now, now I've got my right settings plumbed in. I'll work my way around and I'll take various shots again. And I'll share all those long exposure shots with you now. What an amazing morning. Can't you believe I left the house and it was drizzly rain and then all of a sudden I get over here on the west coast and it's absolutely beautiful this morning. Absolutely stunning. Anyway, hopefully I can make a video out of this. I know it's just one subject. I know hopefully all the different compositions and angles and the long exposures, the zoom lens, the wide angle lens. So hopefully, that makes <laughs> an interesting video. Um, maybe it won't be too long, um, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been absolutely amazing. This weather really helps. And the beauty, I've got a wee breeze, so there's no midges near me, and that's just awesome. So, thanks very much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that'll let you know the next time I post a video. 
So thanks very much for watching and here's to the next video.